It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to this episode of You Can Make It with David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today, I'm going to make something wonderful. Bacon. Everybody loves bacon, but I'm going to make mine a special way. I'm going to dry cure it, which I think is way better than anything you can get in the store. Of course, I'm going to start with our usual first main ingredient, which is copious quantities of wine taken internally. Mmm. That's tasty. Now, what you normally make bacon out of is what Canadians call side pork, or Americans call belly pork, or pork bellies. It's a piece of pork with quite a lot of fat in it, streaks of meat. In Britain, they even call it streaky bacon. It usually comes with a piece of skin still attached to one side. I like to take the skin off when I make bacon, and you can ask the butcher to do it, but what the heck, it's not that hard to do yourself, particularly if you have a nice straight slicing knife. All you have to do is find one corner and start slicing under it and then lift it a bit and start scraping along under the skin. And if you just lift it a bit, you can just keep working your way under, just fold it back just a bit. And now start taking long slices with your slicing knife, scraping the skin. And just keep going, scraping your way down the skin in long slices until you get all the way down the length of the bacon. Now, rather than have you watch four or five minutes while I remove that, I do have a piece that I have already taken the skin off of, and we'll just bring it over, and you can see it looks just fine with the skin off of it. So you can spend the three or four minutes it takes to take it off, or ask the butcher to take it off. Either way is fine. Something else I should point out is you can also make bacon out of a pork shoulder if you cut it in slabs or out of loin. Now the pork shoulder is called buckboard bacon and if you make it out of a loin of ham it's referred to as back bacon in Canada and Canadian bacon in the States. Don't ask me why you Americans call it Canadian bacon, but you do. Uh, I'm just going to go with regular bacon today, but the method is exactly the same as you would use if you were making it with pork shoulder or pork loin. So the first thing you want to do once you've got your pork loin trimmed to the fat is to weigh it. That's because the weight determines how much of the other ingredients you're going to use. You also want to measure how thick it is at the thickest part. Mine is an inch and a half thick at the thickest part. I've measured that and I've weighed it and it's almost exactly one kilogram. So once you know how much your pork weighs, then what you have to do is mix up a curing uh, batch for it or uh, dry cure to rub on it. And when you're making a dry cure, you're going to be using something called pink salt. Now, pink salt is also known by other names. This is pink salt number one. It's also known by prog powder number one, Instacure number one, and a whole bunch of brand names. The important thing for you to know is look at the package and make sure that it says it has 6.25% sodium nitrate and 93.75% salt. If it has those combinations, it doesn't matter what they call it, you can use it in this recipe. Make sure it doesn't have nitrates, that's pink salt number two, and it's used for something totally different. Now, some things you need to know about using curing salts, such as pink salt number one, is that too much of it is very bad for you. If you took a big spoonful of it, it would be very unhealthy. You have to use just small amounts and it what gives the bacon the bacon flavor and that pink cured look. So keep in mind that it's really important you use the exact amount in the recipe. Now if you use too little, you're going to be smoking this bacon for a long time. And it's going to be at the sort of temperatures where bacteria can grow and the nitrites in it, the curing salts help stop the bacteria grow. So it's important you don't use too little. Again, Use the exact amounts that are called for in this recipe. So let's mix up our dry cure. And we'll start with brown sugar. Now for each kilogram of pork, you're going to use 30 milliliters or 25.8 grams of brown sugar. 
for you Americans who are still not caught up to the rest of the world, for each pound of pork, you're going to use two and a half teaspoons of brown sugar or 0.35 ounces, 0.35 ounces. So if you had two kilograms of pork, you double it. If you had two pounds, you double it one and a half, so on. Just multiply it times those figures. Now, the next ingredient of three ingredients we're going to use for our curing salt is kosher salt. Now, for each kilogram of pork, you're going to use 15 milliliters or 19.2 grams of kosher salt. Again, if you had twice as much, double it, half as much, cut it in half. But just add that to the brown sugar. Now, if you're using pounds, for each pound of pork, you're going to use one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt or 0.3 ounces. So the last ingredient is the curing salt, or in this case, pink salt number one. And it's really critical that it be exact. So I really recommend you weigh it, but you can get by in a pinch using dry measures. For each kilogram of pork, you're going to use three grams or 2.3 milliliters of pink salt number one. And for each pound, that works out to one fifth of a teaspoon or 0.04 ounces of pink salt. So you're likely going to need a small little scale if you're going to be weighing it because it's a small amount. And just put that into the other ingredients. So once you've got them all in the bowl, just mix them around with your fingers and make a dry cure rub. Okay, there we go. So once we've got the mix together, we want to pull our pork out and we want to put our pork on a plate or a tray because when we rub the dry cure on, some of it will fall off and we want to get as much of the mixture as we can into our bag later for curing. So make sure you put it on a tray or a plate and put some of the rub on the top and just rub it in. There we go. And then we'll flip it over and we'll get some on the other side. And you want to get some on the edges if you can. Just put it down on the edges. Don't worry about it too much. A little bit on the end. So now that you've got it rubbed in, you have to put this in something to cure. You can use a receivable container of any kind and put it in and turn the meat all the time. Uh, I like to use a plastic bag. I used to use the receivable bags, but now I use a bag from my vacuum sealer. I seal one end of the bag, but leave one end open. And I'm just going to put the bacon into that bag. There we go. Now that I've got the bacon in the bag, it's really important to get all the leftover uh, dry mix or dry cure into the bag. So we're just going to scrape it off the plate and get it all into the bag. Don't worry if you leave a little bit out, but get as much in as you can. You'll never get it all. And you will have a little bit of rub left in the bowl, so it goes in too. Now, now that it's in the bag, I'm going to seal the bag, but I'm not going to suck the air out uh, because that allows liquid to form, and it's a good thing when a bit of liquid forms, you can rub it in. So I'm just going to seal the other end on my vacuum sealer, and I'll be right back with you. So, <clears throat> so there's our bag sealed on both ends. And you see there's lots of air in that. Now this is going to go in my fridge 
long enough for the dry cure to soak through it. And you remember we measured the thickness of the pork to start with. Now this is one and a half inch thick at the thickest part. And the calculation for how long to cure your pork that I use, and I cure mine a little bit longer than most people. I find it just gives it a little bit better texture. I cure it for four days for each inch of thickness plus two days. So this pork is one and a half inches thick, so four times one and a half is six days plus two more days. This will have to cure in my fridge for eight days, and every day I'm going to pick it up, give it a rub, flip it over, and massage it in like that every day. So I'll see you in eight days, and then we'll get around to preparing the bacon for smoking. See you then. So my bacon has been curing in the bag with the curing rub on it for eight days. You'll see there's a little bit of liquid in the bag. There was more in the bag before, uh, but a lot of it soaks back in. So we'll just cut the bag open because now what I want to do is soak this bacon in some cold water for an hour. And I'm going to change the water once. What happens when you use a dry rub is that you get a layer of salt that tends to form on the surface of the pork. And you just want to rinse that off. So we're just going to throw this in some nice cold water. And there it's going to sit for an hour. Like I said, I'll change the water once you get the salt out. And then we'll be prepared to go on to the next step. My bacon has been soaking for an hour with the water change. And now I've put it on a rack on a tray here. What you want to do now is get the bacon totally with a dry surface. So we're going to start just by patting it dry with a paper towel on all sides. And when we got it patted dry now, you have several choices. You can put a fan on it and uh, let it dry in front of the fan for a few hours. You can put it in a warm oven for about 140 degrees for about an hour to two hours to dry it out. Or you can put it in the fridge uncovered on the rack and it'll dry out in the fridge. I prefer the fridge just because it's easier and I don't have to mess around with it. So this is going to go in the fridge uncovered overnight to get a nice dry surface on it. That surface, by the way, is what bacon makers call pellico. So I'll see you again tomorrow. I put my bacon in the fridge overnight and it got a nice dry surface on it. It's a little tacky to the touch, that pellico I was talking about. Now here you have a decision to make. I like quite a strong smoke flavor in my bacon. So I give it two smokings, one cold and one hot. It's called double smoking. Now, you don't have to do this step. You can just go ahead and take the bacon and smoke it in your smoker, as I'll show you in a couple of days. Or you can do this for a stronger smoke flavor as you choose. To cold smoke, I've got a device that's called an amazing pellet smoker. And what it is, it's just a perforated tube filled with special wood pellets. Now you can't use just any wood pellet. You have to use one specially made for smoking food because the heating ones have other stuff in it that would be bad. So make sure you get barbecue smoking pellets. And fill your tube up with pellets. And then just use a propane torch. And give it a good blast for a good 35 or 40 seconds. When you get a really good flame going like that, let it go and let it burn down a bit. Now, as soon as the flame goes out, you want to give it another 30 or 45 seconds. What you're trying to do is get the coals really, really hot and burning like you'd see on the end of a cigar. So we'll just give that another shot. So I've given it three shots with the propane torch and the flame's starting to burn down a bit from the third one. You'll see it burns a bit longer after you do the third blast. Now you want to let this burn for at least about a minute before you put it in and close it down because you want to make sure the coals are burning well. I like to give it one quick blow just to make sure the coals are going. Just like that. So now you'll see there's a really good strong smoke coming out there. That'll die down a bit as it burns. That's another good reason to let it sit for a minute. So we're just going to let this burn for a minute and then I'm going to put my bacon in 
and let it cold smoke. This smoker will, this unit, the Amazon 2 smoker, will burn for sort of four to five hours, which is about perfect for a cold smoke. So I'll be back in a minute with the bacon. You can see I'm getting good smoke from the tube smoker. So now I've just got to put the bacon on. It's been burning for a minute. It's got good coals. If you like, you can give it another blow. And then it's just a matter of putting the bacon in your smoker. Now, I closed the lid up, but I like to have a bit of airflow in my smoker. So I wadded up some paper towel and I just put it under one edge of the door and that just leaves a bit more airflow in the smoker. Now, I'll let this smoke until the tube burns out, which will be about five hours. And then I'm going to take it inside and put it in the fridge overnight, just to let that smoke kind of go through it. I actually prefer to put it in the fridge for two days to let the smoke really mellow through, but that's kind of overkill. It's up to you. I'll see you in a couple of days. So I've taken the bacon out and put it in a smoker I've preheated to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I am now going to give it a hot smoke. Now you can go right to this step and skip the cold smoke I did a couple of days ago. Just put the bacon in you'll have a lighter smoke and it'll still be really good. I've put a probe in it to keep track of when the internal temperature gets to 140 degrees Fahrenheit because that's when I want to take it out. So just put the bacon in, have the probe in, measure it up, close the lid, and I'll see you when it gets up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. I took the bacon out of the smoker and let it cool to room temperature, and then I let it sit in the refrigerator for a day for the smoke to even out. So I smoked my uh, bacon at a hot smoke at 180 degrees Fahrenheit until the internal temperature was between 130 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't have to actually heat it up that much, I just find it easier to slice if you do. Now, I did two smokes on this one. You could have just done the second smoke, as I mentioned. And now you can just have a look at the bacon. See, it's nicely smoked and nice red colors. And it's time to slice it up. So just give me a moment to set up my slicer. Because my slicer isn't the highest end model, it's got a very short table. So I can't put the bacon on it all in one stroke like that because it doesn't fit. So what you can do is fold the bacon over like that, push it in, put the full side toward the blade, and you can start giving it a slice. Now, I like to slice my bacon a little thicker than uh, the stores do. I think they just slice it thin so you think you're getting more bacon. There we go. So you can see you get a nice slice of bacon by folding it. These end pieces that you get, save them to chop up and fry to put in salads and chili and other things. So I'm just going to carry on cutting my bacon and uh, I'll be back with you when I'm done. So what we have here is a plate of beautiful homemade bacon. Just plain old bacon. So, of course, you have to give it a try. So I've preheated my fry pan up here and I'll just throw a couple of strips of bacon into it and we'll cook them up. My bacon is pretty well done the way I like. So, just have it looks nice and brown on both sides. Perfect, just the way I like it. Not too crispy, but still not a lot of fat left in it. So I'm just going to take it off and put it on a paper towel to drain for a second. So I don't fry my fingers out. There we go. And let's try a piece of homemade bacon. Mmm. I use a little bit less salt than the store-bought stuff, so it's a little less salty, but I have a nice sweet hit. It's got a great texture. You can cook it crisper in this if you like. It's a little bit thicker, so it's got a big bite of flavor when you bite into it. This is great bacon, and the best part is, you can make it. I have a good woman. 
I ain't good looking. But I do some cooking. I'm the old fat guy. So use that oven if you want some loving. Be like the old fat guy. Like the old fat girl.